On June 12, 2009, a man would be seen arriving at the Sligo City Hotel in Northern Ireland. Over the next four days, this man who would identify himself as Peter Bergman would be seen on the hotel's CCTV leaving with a small purple bag and returning hours later without it. Each day he would do this, keeping to himself, fading in and out of people's memory without a second thought, and were it not for the events that occurred on the final day, he would have simply been another forgettable patron of the hotel. However, on the 16th of June, his body would be found on the beach at the nearby Ross's Point. What would follow would cause many on the internet to be fixated on attempting to solve a case that left police stumped. The man's body had no identification. The address he listed at his hotel was made up, and even his very own name was an alias. For over a decade, hundreds of people have found themselves drawn to this case with a plot line that seems straight out of a Hollywood movie or an Agatha Christie novel. This is the true story of the mysterious Mr. Bergman. On June 12th, 2009, at around 2 p.m., a man that would go on to be known as Peter Bergman was first spotted at the Ulster Bus Depot in Derry, Ireland. Nothing appeared strange about the man. He was carrying two luggage bags, and for him to be at a bus station would be no cause for alarm, as most everyone else in the area was fitted with similar luggage bags. Around 5.30, he boarded a bus headed to Sligo City, about a 30-minute drive away. At 6.04 p.m., he arrived at Sligo City and called a taxi to the Sligo City Hotel, where he then checked in, giving both a fake name and address. He then went to his room and stayed there for the remainder of June 12th. The following day, on the 13th, Mr. Bergman was seen leaving the hotel and making his way to a post office, where he purchased stamps and airmail stickers. On the 14th, Mr. Bergman hailed a taxi and asked about where he could find a nice, quiet beach to swim at. The driver told him about Ross's point and took him there. After some time, the taxi dropped Mr. Bergman back at the hotel and he stayed in his room for the remainder of the evening. On the 15th, Mr. Bergman checked out of the hotel but was oddly carrying an additional bag that he didn't have when he arrived at the hotel on the 12th. Mr. Bergman then left the hotel, making his way to the bus station on Quay Street, turning onto Wine Street, but stopped at the Quayside Shopping Center, where he seemed to stand around for about five minutes before continuing to the bus station. Once he arrived at the bus station, he ordered food, and while eating, he pulled out a piece of paper from his pocket, read it, and then tore it in half and threw it in a trash can. Mr. Bergman then boarded a bus and made his way to Ross's Point. Once arriving there, he was reported to have talked to several people who passed by him, and from an outside perspective, he appeared to be a friendly older man who was walking to the shoreline. This was the final time anyone had reported seeing Mr. Bergman. The next morning, on the 16th, Mr. Bergman's lifeless body was found on the shore of Ross's Point by a runner. After calling the police, the investigation into what appeared to be a natural death would quickly turn into a mystery that would leave law enforcement dumbfounded. The following investigation into the death of Mr. Bergman would provide little in the means of answers, but would help to shine some light into the lifestyle of the departed. Mr. Bergman was found on the beach in a purple striped speedo, his boxers over top of them, and a navy blue shirt tucked into them. No personal identifiers were found on his person, and it appeared to officers that the victim had drowned and washed ashore. The police were led to the hotel that Mr. Bergman was staying at thanks to the following CCTV footage and interviewing witnesses around the area who had recalled seeing the polite old man on the prior day and stated that he wasn't acting odd or suspicious in any way. Once arriving at the hotel, the police were given what little information the front desk had on the late patron and it was discovered that the address on file belonged to a vacant lot in Germany. However, there was also a report that the address has a street name that doesn't exist in Austria nor Germany. The staff were able to tell police that Mr. Bergman spoke with a heavy German accent and didn't appear to be under any kind of stress or worry when checking in or leaving. None of Mr. Bergman's belongings have ever been located and it appears that he went to great lengths to hide his true identity. As it is custom for anybody found in a mysterious circumstance, an autopsy was conducted, and a lot of jarring information was gathered from this. 
They determined that Mr. Bergman, in fact, did not drown as no water was found in his lungs, nor any other evidence of classic drowning. Mr. Bergman's teeth were found to be in very good condition, especially for his age. They were able to determine that he had frequent dental work done throughout his life, and he had a root canal, crown, and several other procedures done. The autopsy also revealed that Mr. Bergman was in extremely poor health and was suffering from the advanced stages of prostate cancer and bone tumors. He also showed signs of suffering from heart attacks in his earlier life. He was also missing a kidney from a prior surgery. The shocking thing that came from this was that on his toxicology report, no medication was found in his system, which surprised the medical staff. Stating that due to his health conditions that Mr. Bergman would have been in a massive amount of pain and with him not taking any type of painkiller, especially at his age, would have and should have taken a severe toll on him. The rest of the investigation led nowhere unfortunately, as no information could be found on the mysterious Mr. Bergman. This was after a five month investigation, including searches by both Interpol and the German government. The ending result was that this mysterious and unknown man came to Ireland to live out his final days. And this is where the known facts end. But if there is anything we know about the internet, it is that mysteries like this have the brightest light put on them. And those online, those internet detectives, have come up with some very interesting and believable theories on the matter. Once the case began to circulate around online, many around Reddit and other various forum boards started to dissect the case piece by piece. People were watching the CCTV footage frame by frame, watching Mr. Bergman's walk, noticing the purple bag he would always leave with and return with it nowhere to be found. It was discovered that Mr. Bergman was intentionally picking blind spots on the cameras to further hide himself from being recorded. It was later gathered that all of his moves seemed to be very well thought out and precise. The actions that he was taking wasn't just sheer luck or the actions of an incoherent man. What was being done was a very meticulous plan to hide his identity and all traces that could lead back to him. The stamps that Mr. Bourbon purchased were also a notable standout in this entire story. Many have put together that these stamps were put on letters that were sent out by Mr. Bergman to possible close friends or family. The contents of these letters are unknown and will probably remain that way. And the only thing we can assume is that they were farewell letters and requests to keep his identity a secret. There of course were the more outlandish yet appealing theories that he was a former spy which would explain why he was so careful and strict with not only hiding his identity, but also destroying any trace that could be linked to him. It builds from there, and it is theorized that Sligo City must have had some level of importance to Mr. Bergman. Perhaps it was an old vacation spot with his family, or maybe it was where he spent his years as a spy if he were one. The obvious thing here is that clearly both his past and identity were something of great importance because who else goes to these links to hide themselves? If they knew they were going to die soon, then who cares? It's not like anything else could be done to him, but perhaps they were protecting their family or an even darker secret, which does build into the spy theory. There are, of course, even more outlandish theories such as Mr. Bergman being a wanted serial killer, a former World War II Nazi, a convict on the run, and so on. None of which can even be remotely proven and simply exist due to the ramblings of an asshole such as myself from behind a keyboard. Whoever Peter Bergman truly was will remain unknown and for the foreseeable future, his identity and motives will continue to be shrouded in a thick cloud of confusion and internet theories. It appears that the only thing we do in fact know is that people will continue to read about this case and attempt to solve it. And who knows, perhaps with further research and digging up any possible lead, that we may eventually finally have closure to the mysterious case of Mr. Bergman. I hope you all enjoyed this video. 
I know this was a bit on the shorter side of my videos, but there have been some personal issues that have delayed my normal upload schedule. But fortunately, all of that appears to have worked itself out, and things are going back to a normal routine. I am curious to know what all of you think of Mr. Bergman in the comments, and if you have any theories of your own on who he could have been. I am also aware that this story is one that does fall into the category of being too saturated, but this case has been requested frequently by many of you for months, so hopefully you all liked it. Speaking of liking, be sure to do the same for this video, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you all in the next video. Special thanks to all of my patrons, especially my top tier patrons. Borgolf the Straightener, Jace, Beep Beep Bananas, Boop, A Dumb Thought, Blake, KCD, Danny Nunez, Flampaya, Jason Fontella, OOD Hamhord, Lena, Robert Rep, Ryan93, Sbeev, and Skelly. Stay safe out there, friends. Good night.